I need your clothes, your boots, and your fight stick. Hey guys, today's vid is a special one. Jamsta, the mad scientist behind this optical controller, has been building and modding controllers since 2008, back when he first put a PSX pad in a SNES Capcom power stick and used a converter to play. He is constantly pushing the limits regarding what can be done with a fight stick, and he mailed me his one-off optical prototype to test out. And after a quick errand and a light lunch, I was ready to get my hands all over this controller. When he sent it to me, he wanted me to note some of my initial thoughts on first viewing right out of the box. Because this is a proof of concept prototype, I was expecting it to be a lot more rough around the edges. But straight away, this thing looks cool and futuristic and brings to mind something crafted by Cyberdyne Skynet. The whole thing is fabricated from stainless steel, and it definitely has that heft that comes with metal enclosures. It's comparable in weight to an AFS 18-inch case, but I'd venture around 20% smaller. Optical ideas have been on the scene for a while, with perfect 360 joysticks and programmable magenta levers, but this is the first time I've seen one of those ideas carry this far. When one thinks of a fight stick, a joystick and buttons come to mind, but this one doesn't actually have any of those. It's all based around sensors. So how does this thing actually work? Basically, you have four sensors tied to movement and four tied to action buttons. The four action sensors are A to cross, B to square, C to triangle, and D to circle. These sensors emit infrared light, and when that IR light is reflected back, it tells the circuit to short the signal line with the ground line. Here's a quick illustration. These particular sensors are Omron EESPY variants, which are typically used in industrial settings. They run off of 5V and are reflective, so they activate when something gets close. Jamsta has had these optical controller ideas for a long time, but this stick only just came together in recent months, in part because it took so long to find the appropriate sensors, which functioned as required, but also played nicely with the Brook Universal Board, sort of our gold standard in fight stick PCBs. Before this prototype was assembled, Jamsta tested 30 different sensors and actually refined placement of them with LEGO enclosures to get a feel for how they should be oriented. When I quizzed him about the inspiration for the case aesthetics, he admitted he had a love for sci-fi movies such as Ghost in the Shell, Blade Runner, and The Matrix. In those films, you see a lot of peripherals that we don't currently have, but we understand the concept. His idea leans into that sort of hand motion and touch technology aspect that may one day be more commonplace. This Locus Sola series of controllers is a representation of what the future could potentially look like. The Locus Solus name itself is a nod to a novel. Locus Solus is the name of an inventor's estate, simply filled with several mind-blowing inventions that guests cannot comprehend, which seems fitting for a controller seemingly designed around causing double takes. But how does this actually perform? Before I got to go all minority report on this thing, I had to train myself a bit on the controls. The sensors don't have the feedback of an actual button press and require you to land your finger in a certain way or come down in an exact spot, so this is definitely a controller which favors precision. You can hold your fingers close to the sensor to gauge where it does and doesn't trigger so that you can train your hands and fingers to lift less and activate quicker. A lot of the learning curve will be personal to you. I had this controller for a week and a half and still felt I had a lot to learn even by the end of my time with it. I do feel its design is ergonomic because the hands are pointed inward and the sensors are close to one another, so your fingers don't need to be uncomfortably spread. You can play it relatively relaxed, but you can see from some of my hand footage that I wasn't quite sure where to keep my right pinky finger at times, and I looked more like I was sitting down with Aunt Agnes to swill some Earl Grey than a proper fighting game player. The obvious downside of the four action buttons is that so many fighting games require more than four to play. I'm more of a 2D fighting game guy at heart, so I generally want a minimum of six buttons, but even with some of those more classic four button fighters, you'd still lose out on mapping extra functions. I think for how I wanted to play it as a fighting game peripheral, this was its biggest flaw. I just want more sensors. But while I patiently wait for the Locus Solus 6, I tried this version on a slew of other titles to see where it shined. Basically, any game that doesn't require two analog sticks and can be played with four buttons or fewer was on the table.
platformers, even precision platformers, which kind of surprised me, stood up well to the optical functionality. Occasionally I would forget a game had some other buttons required to progress, but for the most part, nearly everything I tried was compatible with the controller. After I went through some Steam titles, I wanted to see how it would fare on older, more classic games. I used a Brook Converter to jack it into my SNES setup. This controller did very well with titles, but in particular, shmups and side-scrolling beat-em-ups. Overall, I was really impressed with this peripheral. It has that ED209 aesthetic, and with optical sensors, this snippet of play is really just the tip of the iceberg. Just think of the possibilities. Finger tap macros, finger swipes for different inputs, wrist sensor placement for flick inputs. The size of the optic sensors allow you to trigger actions in super small areas, so you could feasibly have a functional fight stick in the palm of your hands. Maybe even retool an old power glove to accommodate the sensors to really flex on your opponent. Maybe character-specific sensor setups with all swipes and wrist flicks. The sky is the limit, and I'm excited to see this idea get fleshed out by Jamsta and other creatives in the fightstick scene. So what's next on the horizon for Jamsta? He's busy working on the Locust Sola 6 prototype, and I for one can't wait to see how it shapes up. The six sensor version will likely remove the thumb sensor on the right hand and add the three extra sensors facing up instead of forward, but he's still in the lab trying to dial in the best sensor placement. Huge thanks to Jamsta for letting me get a first look at your pet project. Super inspiring stuff, and I'm glad I got to help tell your story. Have you seen this bite stick? If you want to inquire more about the Locus Solus 4, Jamsta can be reached at jamsta.art at gmail.com. And these are his shoutouts. Hey, thanks for watching. Support your locals, and I'll see you next time.